nice sound to, to gur gur sound. <laughs> Noisy old bastard. Love it. <laughs> Hello. I'm Hank. I've made a Blues Driver 2 clone. Uh, I'm going to demo the clone so you can hear what it sounds like, what it does, the noises it what it makes. And, um, and after that, I'm going to talk to you about the pedal a little bit. I'm going to talk to you about this instrument, the amps, the microphones, all that stuff. Um, but first, let's have a listen to this thing and see what noises it can make, isn't it? Thank you. 
So, here's my little Blues Driver clone. Um, I've built this from instructions uh, on a wonderful website called uh, tagboardeffects.blogspot.com. Um, and on the website, they've got hundreds of pedals for you to build. Um, and they have these wonderful little diagrams with all the different components um, and where to stick them on a piece of perf board. Um, and there's loads of support on the website and instructions to, to guide you through how to do this. Um, this particular pedal is put together by, from this schematic, which is basically the same schematic that is used by Boss for their Blues Driver pedals, with the exception of a few things that have been omitted. Um, it omits the buffer section and the power reduction section. Uh, basically, the buffer um, in Boss pedals stops that clicking noise when you activate the pedal. Um, because it means that the pedal is always engaged. Even when it's turned off, it's still running through the buffer circuitry, which means essentially there is some coloration to the sound of your guitar, even if you don't have the pedal on. If the pedal's in your chain, it's affecting the sound of your guitar. Um, and not everyone's into that, which is why we have true bypass switches like this one. Um, so the whole buffer section is emitted, so you can use a true bypass. Um, and the power difference, uh, according to John um, Callis on the on the site, uh, it should be eight volts and not nine volts. Um, so that's been omitted, and uh, allegedly that's one of the reasons why it gets a bit squealy when you turn the distortion up high. Um, but yeah, there we are. Um, the pedal works as the normal Boss Blues Driver does. You've got your volume here, you've got your tone, and your gain. Um, and that's it, nice and simple, quite versatile, uh, wonderful little pedal. The thing I like about it is um, it gives you loads of headroom. So you, you can just use it as a boost pedal, have the gain down, and you've got all this volume control just to have it as a boost. Um, or even with the gain up really high, if you play lightly, um, it's really receptive to the, the dynamic of, of the input that goes into the pedal. So if you play lightly, you still get quite a clean sound, but then when you hit it, hit your, your strings heavily, you get that crunch and distortion, and how much is up to you on where you s flip the game. So there we are. So let's open it up and have a look at, at its guts, see how it works, and I'll talk you through some of the changes that I've made that are different um, from the one on the website. So this is the inside of the pedal, um, and all of the guts are these components on this perf board here. I've created this following the instructions from tagboardeffects.blogspot.co.uk. Um, I've followed the, the instructions to the T with the exception of a few things that I've done differently. Um, so if you go to the website and go to the Blues Driver 2 section um, and you scroll down, you'll find in the, in the comments there's a whole bunch of people talking about different modifications. And there's a guy on there called John Kalis, and uh, he seems to be like really on top of how to modify this to, to make it sound awesome. So I've, I've followed a lot of what he's been suggesting. So the main differences that, that I have done between my board and all the components on the website are basically following John's suggestions. First of all, he's suggesting that you swap the J201s here for um, the guys that I've got here, which are uh, BF245As. Um, I've, and I've done a comparison between the two, and he's absolutely right. These, these sound a lot clearer. They're a lot more kind of high fidelity. Um, they sound awesome. So I've done that. Uh, he's also suggested stacking the op amp here uh, and using a different op amp. The op amp he's suggesting is an NE5534, which is what I've used, and I've stacked them as he suggested. Basically, a stacked op amp is two op amps on top of one another soldered to each other. Um, so they're basically connected in parallel. Um, other than that, I've swapped out this tone cap here. The whole signal runs through this low pass filter. Um, and I've increased it to a larger value, so this is 47 nanofarads as opposed to 18, um, which allows more low end to travel through the circuit. So you're basically cutting off less low end when you activate the pedal. 
um, I find that this has made it a lot more realistic to the tone of the guitar before activating the pedal, so you don't lose any of the body of the guitar. Um, this is something that, that uh, Robert Keeley does in his mod, but he adds a little switch so that you can engage it, and he calls it a bass boost switch. Um, but that's essentially what he's doing, just changing the value of that capacitor with a switch. Um, the other thing, I, I've changed the resistor, as suggested by John on the website. Um, I'm using a, a 10K here. Um, the original is 15K, and the one that John suggests is 13K. And what this does is it, it allows your mid frequencies to disappear to ground. So that the, the higher this value is, the less mid you lose, and the lower the value, the more mid. And I've found that, that 10K comes closer to the, the tone of the guitar um, before activating the pedal. Uh, so that is it, other than mucking around with the diodes, which is kind of encouraged. In the Keeley mod, there's some, he, he's suggesting you, you try asymmetrical layout. So I've got here one diode against two on this side. I've also switched out one of the diodes that is in the feedback loop of the op amp. Um, here, I've switched it out for one of the ones that Keeley suggested suggests um, again for some more asymmetrical clipping um, other than that it's stock I've also managed to fit in a little battery here um, behind the foot switch which fits in quite neatly and I've got this running via the DC power input um, so that when there's an input plugged in it cuts the battery out of the circuit so that your battery doesn't drain when you've got it plugged into the wall um, the, uh, and then all of the power is running to ground, but it's running to ground from a TSR, which is um, basically a stereo quarter-inch jack. Um, and so the middle pin uh, I'm using to ground it, which means that it doesn't actually connect to ground unless there's a jack in there. And the jack becomes a conductor, um, which conducts the, the ground to the ground of the whole pedal. So basically, no power is running through this unless there's a jack plugged in. Um, again, that stops the battery from draining um, if you forget to turn it off or whatever. Uh, yeah, and that's it. There's my lovely little pedal. Yeah, I highly recommend the website. It's bloody awesome. Tagboardeffects.blogspot.co.uk There's literally hundreds of different pedals that you can make um, with full instructions on how to do it. All you need to do is, is order the components up from an electrical supplier, um, put it together, and uh, it bloody work. And there's support and suggestions for different changes. Um, it's a great website. Get involved. So this is my homemade base six. Um, Bass 6 is an instrument that Fender produced in the 60s, originally called a Bottom Master, but they rebranded it, surprise, surprise, because it was not really about bottoms, it was more about bass. Uh, it's basically halfway between a bass guitar and your average guitar. It's got the same pitches as a bass guitar, so it's an E octave below a normal guitar, but it has the same string spread as a normal guitar, so it's really comfortable to play especially if you're a guitarist and you're used to playing with that distance between the strings. Um, it's a slightly shorter scale than a normal bass. Normal basses are 34 inch scale length, which is the distance between the nut and the bridge. Um, this is 30. Uh, a standard normal guitar is uh, usually 25 and a half inches. So this is kind of between the two. It's kind of in that range that people kind of refer to baritone guitars, but actually the way this is tuned um, it's tuned in the same pitches as a bass guitar, so it's... I guess it's a bass, maybe it's a baritone guitar. Uh, who gives a toss? The strings are a little lighter than you'd find on a normal bass guitar, so as a result they can be a little loose. But on the whole they sound pretty good, and they're not as thick, so in theory you don't have quite as much depth, but... very happy with with the way this sounds I don't really need it to be any deeper it's great and it gives you the gives you the freedom to play kind of guitar lead lines yeah it's lovely it's that kind of halfway medium
in between bass and guitar. So this isn't a bass six, this is my own homemade bass six. Um, I'm going to talk to you briefly about how I've produced it. Um, so what I did was I got hold of a short scale bass. Um, this specific bass I bought brand new um, from GAC. Uh, it's a Squire Jaguar bass but it's one of the one of the vintage modified short scale range um, uh, and it's very much as it was when I bought it I've changed very little all, all I have changed is I've taken out the machine heads filled in the holes um, with dowel drilled six new holes put normal everyday guitar machine heads in um, and then I've taken out the nut replaced it with a zero fret and a string guide like the strings don't rest on the nut, they rest on the fret, uh, which was easier for me than actually filing my own nut because that's a bit of a tricky job and I'm a total noob, so I would have screwed it up. So I just put a zero fret in, whittled this little wooden string guide to separate the strings and keep the spacing um, exact. Um, so that's that sorted. And then all I did was take, out, take off the bridge and install a kind of jazz master style bridge um, which there's a dude in Colchester who makes these um, and then this cheap old tail piece which I got from eBay from China probably um, and then I fixed the tail piece through the body because um, the actual pressure of the strings was kind of pulling it away from the body uh, other than that everything else is stock so the neck the body the pickups are all what the original um, uh, Jaguar Squire bass. I've just changed the machine heads, the nut, and the bridge, and and there we go. The only other modification I've made to it is um, I have taken out the pots because the pots are pretty crap in the original Squire. And in fact, the the last pot, um, the lug of, of of the tone pot is soldered directly to the jack socket. So if your jack gets a little loose and you tighten it. If you tighten it too much, you can end up turning the jack and rotating it away from the pot, breaking the connection and losing signal of your guitar. It's a super, super cheap. I don't know like why they did it that way. I'm waffling. Anyway, so I took out the pots. I've replaced them with little switches um, so I can turn on and off my pickups. And I put a little volume pot in here, but that, it doesn't quite work. Um, so I've got it bypassed. Um, Yes! So I'll show you these little switches. So at the moment, uh, that's both of them off. No sound. And then if I switch this one on, it turns on this pickup, which is the precision bass pickup. It's got two pickups in the guitar, a, a P bass and a, a jazz. So it's a JP configuration. Um, they're both wired in parallel via these switches to the jack. Uh, so here we go. First, first one is the P bass, which is this switch. Second one is the jazz, which is way treblier, um, but the combination is quite nice with the two. But I'm tending to favour just the P bass on its own at the moment. And there is my homemade bass six. Thanks, yeah, hello, goodbye. So, um, let's have a little chat about the gear I'm using to record this little demonstration. So, I've got my basics running into my amp, which is a uh, 1968 Silverface Fender Bandmaster Reverb. Um, uh, that is running into this cab, which is a 2x12. It was originally a 2x10 um, Viber Lux, I think. Um, blonde cab from the 50s um, but the previous owner swapped out the 10 inch drivers for 12 inch drivers they're two 12 inch um, Celestian G12H's um, one's a 55 hertz and the other is a 75 hertz but they sound 
delicious in this little cab. Love this little cab. Um, and then it's being mic'd up by a couple of microphones I've got here, an SM57, kind of standard um, microphone, uh, normal cardioid dynamic microphone. Um, and then I've got a condenser, which is uh, an Octava MK012. Uh, at some point I'm gonna mod it, but at the moment it's unmodded, just natural as it is um, from the factory. Uh, and they are running into my sound card, which is a mode two eight nine six, um, and then that's running into my laptop, and that's how the sound happens. Yeah, thanks for watching. I hope this video has been interesting and useful. Um, whatever. Goodbye. Ha <laughs> ha.